Okay. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Okay. Would you please stand and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance? Of the United States of America, to the Republic for one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Uh, before we get to our agenda, I would like to um, take a moment to um, to commemorate uh, D-Day, which is tomorrow, mm -hmm. and the invasion of Normandy, and to have a moment of silence to honor those who um, put their lives at risk and those who gave their lives to protect our freedoms. So please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Our first order of business is to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed, nay. Motion passes. Next, we'll take up the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a commissioner or citizen so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda. All consent agenda items are commission action items unless otherwise noted. Do we have a motion? Madam President, I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed, nay? Motion passes. All right, on to the regular agenda. Our first order uh, of business on the regular agenda is ordinance number 240. This is a public hearing, so I'll open the public hearing and we'll begin with a staff presentation. Good morning, uh, commissioners. Uh, my name is Scott Spears, for the record, uh, and uh, I am assistant general counsel with the Ada County Highway District. Uh, this is a decision briefing for ordinance 240. The notice of public hearing for this uh, was published in accordance with state law on May 28th and May 29th. The reasons for these amendments is that in the, the 2019 legislative session, the Idaho legislature passed Senate Bill 1046, which amended Idaho Code 40-1309 to allow highway districts to declare property valued at $10,000 or less to be surplus without public notice, uh, a publication of notice or a public hearing and to dispose of such property at a private sale. Uh, the summary of the amendments before you uh, to make uh, policy consistent with the change to Idaho code are in uh, section 2033.1 for property valued at $10,000 or less, uh, section 2033.2 property valued at more than $10,000 and section 2033.5 commuter ride van donations. Uh, staff recommends that the commission adopt ordinance 240. If adopted, uh, ordinance 240 will be effective July 3rd, 2019. And with that, I would stand for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Spears. Are there questions, comments? No? Okay, this is a public hearing, so is there anyone who would like to address this item? Seeing no volunteers, I'll close the public hearing. Madam President, I would make a motion that we approve ordinance number 240. Second. I have a motion and second. Is there any discussion? No, hearing none, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed, nay? Motion passes. All right, the next item on our agenda is the Belvoir Estates subdivision. It's a preliminary Flat and rezone requests for approval. Madam President. Uh, I think Commissioner Baker had a motion. For okay, that's. What I'm... Oh, okay. Um, well, uh, um, Madam President, I would move that we send the staff report to the Eagle City Planning and Zoning with a with a cover letter that states that this meets our policies. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Discussion? 
No discussion? Uh, I'd like to he hear what Mindy has. I have some questions about uh, the impacts of this on uh, our Master Street map, whether they were my concern is I'd like to have that letter state that this agency, if we're just going to state it, that this agency is taking no position on the development itself, um, and we are reaffirming our support uh, in the Master Street Map to three lanes on Beacon Light Road and on Floating Feather Road. People of Eagle have worked very hard to make sure that those roads are constrained and that um, uh, there's no nothing that we do. Um, and my biggest concern in this and reading it, and I'd like to hear Mindy, is that we would be authorizing a, the donation or the the yeah, I guess the giving over of some property to uh, ACHT for multi-lane roundabouts, which seems to imply we would then own sufficient property along that corridor if we wanted to change our mind. Uh, a future commission wants to change its mind could build a five lanes and, and so my concern is that we have to express uh, no opinion until we've held taken public testimony um, as to whether this does or doesn't uh, make it easier to um, back away from our commitment on uh, floating feather and beacon light road well, Madam President, well, I would amend my motion to include that it we that the letter state we don't take a position on the development but um, my concern with um, adding the thing about Beacon Light Road three lanes is that we are, for now, we are continuing under what we had said, but I don't think we have the ability to determine what future commissions might or might not do, so I would not put that in. Well, and, and I would agree with that. Um, I, I'm, well, the last part at least. I'm not sure that it's really appropriate for us to say that we're not taking any position on this development. This is actually a development that qualifies for a staff level approval. Uh, it meets all of our policies and we don't have any legal basis to um, deny it or defer it. Um, this really shouldn't even be in front of the Commission. So. Um, I think forwarding forwarding it to the the city with a letter saying here's our staff report is sufficient, but well, perhaps the position on on the land use development. Okay, yeah, I would go along with that. So the second agrees. Is there any further discussion? Well, um, if. Uh, I am reading uh, the tea leaves correct here. There was the stipulation that if it pertained to Beacon Light Road, it would be placed on the consent agenda, which does speak to the concern about anything that's taking place in that area. So I think the uh, concern earlier was that um, there's so much involved and is such a large development that uh, my colleagues wanted to give some time to the residents of that area a chance to come in and speak or to um, send it back and have the planning and zoning. Am I stating that correct? Well, I, I think um, the citizens will have the opportunity to speak to the land use issues at planning and zoning. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know that it will even come back to us. but. The, the reason anything pertaining to Beacon Light comes in front of the Commission is really just to, to keep us in the loop and let us know that there is something that's going through that pertains to Beacon Light. Um, because this meets all of our policies, it really doesn't require any Commission action. Um, so, I, Steve, do you have anything to add to this? Uh, no, Madam President, Steve Price, ACH, ACHD General Counsel. The, uh, the previous policy of the Commission is, is because of the sensitivity of Beacon Light Road that any development applications that were within the vicinity that they would be brought to the Commission. This particular application is uh, different. Um, one, uh, you are correct that uh, on its face uh, it meets all of our policies that under our Paul staff 
authorization. Uh, they have the authority to approve the development application. This, this particular development is different in, in that, that there's been an existing development agreement that's in place. Uh, and the annexation issues already uh, been addressed. So um, if it was a new development, then it most certainly would warrant the commission's full review, but this has um, already been in place uh, and it's just really going forward with what's already been approved through a development agreement. Well, and we're not taking any action that affects Beacon Light. Mm -mm. We're not changing our policy that's already in place on Beacon Light. That would have to come back to the full commission to change uh, anything pertaining to Beacon Light. So this isn't doing that. No. Staff doesn't have the authority to do that, and absolutely the staff not. doesn't change anything You're right. with regard to Beacon Light. Yep. And Madam President, this doesn't really have anything to do with the discussion here. However, um, there are many areas throughout this county where I think um, people are concerned about the the development and and increasing the load on the roads in front of their house. And so singling out Beacon Light, I mean, it's nice for them, but it really, how does that, how does it make everybody else feel in the county? So we might want to revisit that at some point. I mean, it's not like we're going to go out and rip it up and put five lanes in. It was just something in the planning stages, but um, I, it's, it, it makes me uneasy where we're, where we're giving, um, higher priority to one particular road out of all the 5,000 running miles of traffic of, of um, roadways that we have that we're only looking at, you know, giving special consideration to a very, very few miles of that. And I, I, I think that's kind of wrong. But as I said, that's something for a later discussion. Okay. Any, Any further, further discussion? Yes, I have a little I, something. I, I just uh, continue to have a concern, um, uh, Madam President, uh, that uh, we are requiring a dedication of land for a multi-lane roundabout. And I don't think until there's evidence presented that that's necessary Not if it's that. a single, if, if we're going to have single lanes with a turn lane uh, on those two roads. Um, so. Uh, that that was my concern is when we de require a private landowner to dedicate land for some future expansion it implies that we're supporting that expansion and uh, since our master street map does not warrant it at this date and future commissions can do that I um, think you're I, misunderstanding this staff would, report we are not requiring the developer to donate or, or dedicate any right away it's not a this, requirement by ACHD is this correct Mindy Madam President, Commissioner Hansen, for the multi-lane roundabout, any time we have a roundabout where the approach legs aren't the exact same number of lanes, so on Beacon Light long term there would be three lanes, Palmer is planned for two lanes, we would consider that to be a multi-lane roundabout. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be five lanes, and because we don't know the future needs, maybe there's a bypass lane that's needed at some point in the future, it just provides the opportunity. The intersection configuration doesn't mean doesn't determine the lane widths for the roadways. Um, because there is a multi-lane roundabout shown at Beacon Light and Palmer Lane, our policy is that we do require the right-of-way dedication, but that the roundabout not be constructed at this time. Right, so we are, we are requiring a dedication of land for that Correct. future contingency. Okay, thank because you. Because they offered to donate it and they're showing the roundabout. We're not authorizing them to build it. No, that's, that that's wasn't present and, and it's a requirement of our policy. We're requiring them to de dedicate it. Okay, further discussion? Just, Madam President, one yeah. one thing, and I, I know that there are some, there's at least one difference between this particular development application and, and one that I'm thinking of from several years ago, which was the Syringa development, which also appeared initially on the consent agenda. Um, and everybody knows the history of that here. Um, I, I just think that uh, regardless of whether or not it meets all of our policies, we really think, I think, that the public uh, deserves on these larger developments to at least have their feelings um, made part of the public record other than uh, sending an email. So are you suggesting we have a full public hearing on this? Yes. A night meeting? Yes. Is that a motion? Yes. 
as a substitute motion. Okay, would you like to set the date? Uh, uh, not unless we know exactly when Eagle's going to uh, act on this. So then is your motion, <clears throat> what is your motion, to defer it indefinitely? What, to what defer it until uh, such time as the um, land you say, uh, folks in Eagle have uh, made their determination. Madam President. Are we gonna share the staff report with them? I mean. Sure, that'd be fine. Is, is, is there a second to that motion? Well, I'll second that motion. But, Madam, motion to defer this until the land use agency has acted, but that the staff report may be forwarded in the meantime to the land use agency. Mr. Price, do you have an opinion on this? They, they uh, Madam President, uh, commissioners, um, you're putting the developer in a difficult spot because what we found in this this in, this type of instances is that the land use agency, the PNZ, will then reply and say, "Well, we will not make a decision until ACHD's made a decision," and then the the applicant is stuck in uh, in quandary uh, because neither agency will act. And the practice and in the agreements that we have with all the land use jurisdictions that we will act first that any decisions that we make, they will indemnify us from our decisions in the event that there's a legal challenge. And that is something that we have, that is a process that we have established by agreement. This would be outside that practice and outside that agreement with the City of Eagle. So Mr. Price, I have a question. So we do have, we are constrained by a written agreement or by law to act on this first? Um, Madam President, commissioners, not by law, but by an agreement that we've had with all of the jurisdictions. Uh, it relates to um, a decision out of the KMST Ada County case where uh, we made a, uh, a decision um, and uh, the county ended up being held liable. As a result of that, the county and the cities wanted to be indemnified from any decisions that we would make. And in that, at that time, in that agreement, we, uh, we stipulated that we would, by process, that we would hear the applications and they would indemnify us um, as a result of any conditions that we put on a development. Remember, because of KMST, the land use agencies accept with the preliminary plat, they are the final say in the development process. So I have a further question. So if the land use agencies in evaluating this determines that there ought to be a condition after hearing all the public testimony, but they don't have the power to impose that condition, ACHD does, uh, how does that then come back to ACHD to then impose that condition because it's uh, uh, one that the city would like, but they can't, don't have the power to do it. We're not imposing it now because we haven't, we don't evaluate the impacts on land use. So can they come well, well, back and ask us? Remember, uh, commissioners, uh, Commissioner Hansen, we only have the authority to impose conditions that are within our jurisdiction and that relate to the, the conditions of approval for a preliminary plat. The city, the land use agencies don't have any authority to impose conditions that are within our purview. And um, they typically, the, the issues that we have are technically related and they're outside their area of expertise. They either can no, we, we've never had the issue that you're discussing where that they want to find a way to get back. They either work it out with the developer or they don't have the authority to impose the condition. In this instance, the developer's application meets all of our policy. We don't have a legal basis to deny it. Um, and whether the land use agency wants a new condition or a different condition, we can't impose anything that's outside our policy. So I have a question, Mr. Price. So is an indefinite deferral uh, bordering on being a denial in effect? Yeah, probably. Yes. Madam President, there are case, cases yeah. that indicate that an applicant is afforded reasonable process in terms of timing and any deferral that represents a significant period of time can result in a constructive denial and a basis for legal challenge. Madam President. Yes. <clears throat> absent, absent the term Beacon Light Road, we would not have seen this. 
we would not have seen this. Right. So I understand uh, some of the commissioner's concerns, um, but having a full-blown public hearing at some point in the future, which we don't know the date, is not going to change the facts. Plurinary plat will have to be approved. We'll say, yeah, sure, go do the rezone. Yeah, do the plan use development. Yeah, do the development agreement. We don't have a dog in that fight. Um, if the discussion is to have this go to the city for their approval, then sending our staff report will meet their will meet their needs. And if they have questions, they can come back to us. But at this point in time, I, if we if we don't even know when we're going to be having a hearing date, and we can we. It, it's a it's a conundrum. And so. Yes. Um, in sure. light of the comments by Mr. Price, um, how if it goes back, we're probably just going to end up in uh, some sort of a standoff. Would um, there be a consideration to set a time, uh, maybe to our night meeting this month, rather than leave it open ended? Would that be something that could be considered? So it's just not. Out be there. fine with me. But Madam President, they're, they're, Commissioner Baker, we're not going to be able to change anything. I mean, we're basically hauling people down here to say, "Ooh, we hate this. Ooh, it's going to affect Beacon Light Road. Ooh, don't make it go five lanes," which which it's not. Ooh, don't do this. But at the end of the day, we can't say, "Sure, we're not going to do this." We're going to say, "Sorry, go talk to the land use agency. That's where most of the concerns of this will end up, mm -hmm. is with the land use agency. So sending them the staff report, I think, is a, is a compromise that, um, and if, if there are concerns, then they can come back. But if we, want, if we want to start having the cities discuss this before it comes to us, we have to start taking some steps in order to move that along, because right now, we're at the point where they won't do anything until we do. So, Mr. Price, we're a little off topic on that, but I guess the procedure for that would be to have meetings with the city and change our process, talk to them about changing the process. Uh, Madam President, uh, Steve Price again, uh, ACHG General Counsel. I mean, that's obviously one option, but um, th this has been properly noticed before today's uh, commission. Um, there are people here that are prepared to uh, make presentations, uh, both our staff as well as the applicant's representative. Um, the uh, I think, if anything, if you decide not to go ahead and send the staff report uh, to the city as the uh, decision of the commission, then you would have to go forward today. Uh, with uh, the noticed briefing, decision briefing, and at the end of it, then you could make a decision as to whether you want to defer it. Um, I suppose you could um, right off the bat make a decision to defer it to another time, but that's unfair to the people that have showed up today. Uh, typically, we've not engaged in that practice. Uh, Madam Chair, f based upon that and on the understanding that people here, I withdraw my second and uh, I'd like to hear from the people who are here. Um, Madam President, I think this this discussion has been very informative and illustrates the, the weakness, we, the governance we have the, of having two separately elected bodies with separate powers that they don't, the other ones don't have. And it puts um, um, both the public and the private interests that are coming to us in a, in a very difficult position. So uh, I'd like it to... It is a position that was set up by statute uh, and approved absolutely. by the voters. This is not really the appropriate time for you to get on your I hate ACHD soapbox. Um, so based upon that, I've withdrawn my second. I'd like to hear from the parties, but I have not made a decision on whether to support the pending motion. Thank you. Well, okay, Madam so President, the there's a motion, motion before motion us. has been yeah. withdrawn. That takes us back to the original motion. Is there any further discussion on the original motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the original motion by Commissioner Baker, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. All right. So that motion fails.
I guess we'll can we have a roll call vote on that? Okay, let's do a roll call vote. Madam President, can can you restate the motion? Could we kind of okay. gone back and forth a couple times? Okay, the motion was to send the staff report regarding Belvoir Estate Subdivision to the Eagle County or Eagle City Planning and Zoning with a letter that states that this meets our policies. Okay. And then oh, and then there was that section about um, we have no position. We have no position on the land use uh, portions of the development. Okay, and that was, and I did agree with that as the person who seconded the motion. Okay, so let's have a roll call vote on that motion now that it's been clarified. All those in favor, please say aye. Um, actually, say so you want to call the roll? Report. Report. Yeah, we have yes. A, I can't form an opinion until no. we give the staff report. Commissioner Arnold. Yes. Commissioner May. Uh, no. No. Okay. Well, then I guess we're going to go forward today with um, hearing this item. We'll begin with the staff report. Madam President, Commissioners, for the record, Mindy Walsh Development Services. And before you, we have a decision briefing for the Belvoir Estates Subdivision. We'll have a brief. Um, project overview including a little bit of the site history, um, a discussion of traffic study requirements, right-of-way dedication and improvements, and staff's recommendation. So before you is a rezone, a planned unit development, preliminary plat and development agreement modification application to allow for the development of 913 single-family home building lots, 52 common lots, one elementary school lot, and one city of Eagle Park lot on 372 acres. The site is located on the east and west sides of Palmer Lane south of Beacon Light Road. The site has frontage on Beacon Light Road, a minor arterial roadway to the north. Palmer Lane, a collector roadway, runs through the middle of the site. Floating Feather Road east of Palmer Lane to the south is a minor arterial roadway, and Floating Feather Road on the west side of Palmer Lane in this area is a collector roadway. This development is estimated to generate 8,090 vehicle trips per day, with 846 of those occurring during the PM peak hour. In May of 2007, ACHD reviewed this site for an annexation rezone and development agreement with the City of Eagle. I'm sorry, what year was that? 2007. Okay, thank you. So under the current conditions of the development agreement, the site is entitled up to 1,824 single-family dwelling units. The current proposal is for 913 single-family dwelling units, providing a significant number in the amount of vehicle trips. I also wanted to note that the entire western portion of the development or the portion um, west of Palmer Lane is planned to be private roads, roads which will not be owned or maintained by ACHD. Um, consistent with the ACHD policy, a traffic study was prepared for this development. I understand, Commissioner Hansen, you had some questions regarding the scope of work for the study. The scope of work for the traffic impact study is determined through ACHD's scope of traffic impact study policy, which was, requires downstream intersections and roadways to be included in the study when 10% or greater of the site genera generated traffic impacts those areas. The impacts of the site generated traffic are determined through a compass model run specific to each development and the scope of work for the traffic study for this traffic impact study um, was prepared meeting all ACHD policies and standards. Uh, uh, Mindy, could I interrupt and just ask a question? So presumably people once they've gone down towards State Street or up towards Beacon Light that they wouldn't stop there, they would head somewhere. And our traffic, do we do an, any analysis of the, where that traffic mostly goes, east, west, south, north, and then what that impact has? Because we have a constrained area to the north, only Hill Road and State Street are the arterials going into, uh, in towards Boise. Do we do any study or require any study on, um, on those once the, 
Madam we? President, Commissioner Hansen. So our, under our policy, they're only evaluating those areas where their site-generated traffic is 10% or greater based on a compass model run. Um, in this case, um, less than 10% of their site traffic was hitting state or hill or any of those roadways. We did request that Beacon Light Road be included as part of the study area, although based on the compass model, their site-generated traffic would be 3% or less. In terms of right-of-way dedication improvements for the area roadways, in 2008, the Commission approved the floating feather realignment study, and part of that study it was determined that the arterial sections of floating feather road would be three-lane minor arterial roadways. That's a 46-foot street section and 74 feet of right-of-way. That was also memorialized in the master street map. So consistent with the master street map and the floating feather realignment study, staff has recommended that floating feather road, the arterial section shown in green, that they dedicate 37 feet of right of way from the center line of the roadway. Although we did not adopt the study as part of the 2014 public hearings on the Northwest Foothills Transportation Plan update, the commission directed that Beacon Light Road be limited to a three-lane arterial, rural arterial roadway within 96 feet of right-of-way. The wider right-of-way width provides for design options with the future construction of the roadway, including but not limited to wider paved shoulders, equestrian facilities, pathways, and drainage. This is also memorialized on the master street map. So consistent with the commission direction and the master street map, staff has recommended that 48 feet of right of way be dedicated from the center line of Beacon Light Road abutting the site, the area shown in blue. Both Palmer Lane and Floating Feather west of Palmer Lane are classified as collector roadways on ACHD's master street map. So staff has recommended that those be constructed as 36 foot wide collector roadways within 54 feet of right of way. This application meets all ACHD policies and standards. The applicant and staff are in agreement on all findings for consideration and site-specific conditions of approval. Staff recommends approval of the staff report as written, and I'll stand for any questions. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. Are there questions? No, not at this time. All right, we will hear from the developer next then. And if you would, please state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm Becky McKay with Engineering Solutions Business Address 1029 North Rosario in Meridian. Um, I'm representing toll, uh, toll ID on the Belvoir Estates application. Uh, just to kind of give Commissioner Hansen a little bit of background, um, I've been working on this project kind of off and on for about three years. Um, unlike most projects where we're uh, coming in with a preliminary plat, annexation, rezone request, this particular piece of property in 2007 was annexed and zoned for this use. And a development agreement was signed by the city and the property owners, the Hormachia family at the time, and as Mindy indicated, just with a bubble plan showing some collector, future collector roadways, um, they approved it for 1,824 dwelling units, which is 4.9 dwelling units per acre. And they, they have a series of zones, MUDA, R4DA, and R2DA. So as far as land use, What's before you is not a change of land use. The land use has been established back in 2007 when the City of Eagle decided they'd serve this property with their water system and they'd annex and zone it. Um, now when I first got the project, I live off Beacon, Lo Beacon Light Road and I have since 2003. And so I was fully aware of the Beacon Light, Friends of Beacon Light, um, I did meet with two representatives of the Friends of Beacon Light and they said, hey, we heard you're working on a concept for the Hormachia property. Can you tell us what's going on? And I said, well, I said, I'm going to be probably 
at 50% or less density than was initially approved when the city annexed and zoned it. And they said, oh, we want to hug you. <laughs> they said, that is great news. And I said, you know, we're going to have collector roadways, we're going to have pathways, we're going to have trails, we're going to have a school site, we're going to have a park site. And they said, all of that sounds really wonderful. And they said, you know, that we couldn't ask for a better development at that location. So I, I mean, they were very happy. Um, I had multiple neighborhood meetings with the property owners within 300 feet and those beyond at the city hall. Um, we made some adjustments based on their comments. We met with the school district. The school district indicated that they need an elementary site at this location because Highway 16 is kind of a barrier and they, they want an elementary over in this north uh, west quadrant of the city of Eagle. They don't want those kids having to go across 16 over to uh, the Star Elementary and the future Star Elementary next to the middle school. Um, so we incorporated that in. The school site is right here. No direct lot access. The city also indicated that they wanted, they needed um, soccer fields. Desperately, they need soccer fields. So we worked with the department and we incorporated approximately 15 acres for the city soccer fields. Now, in our design. On and light. Um, we show 48 feet of right away um, and then I have a 60 foot buffer. The city will uh, ask that we install a 10 foot um, sidewalk along that corridor and then on floating feather we'll install a 10 foot walk all along the feet of landscaping and 48 feet of right away. We'll be building Palmer out to a collector standard for gutter and sidewalk frontage. Their parks commission asked the entire east side that I 10 foot wide um, sidewalk along Palmer leading up to the elementary school. Now, when I've done these larger projects in the past, I have always asked my developers one question. Due to the size of the project, I would like you to donate right away to Ada County Highway District to help save dollars, public dollars, to help facilitate improvements on the transportation network. Pole has agreed to donate the right of way, 48 feet here, 48 feet here. Obviously, there's no compensation for Palmer, but it's a we donate that and then whatever's necessary for the roundabout on our corner. Um, one that just adds more dollars into the coffers of the district to spend elsewhere. Um, I did put that in writing. I sent it to Mindy. I always feel that, you know, that's, that's something that we can do. Um, so if there's concerns about the amount of right of way, it's at no cost to the district whatsoever. Um, whether that 48 feet is used or, or not used, whether Beacon Light stays three lanes forever or someday needs five, the right of way is there, like I said, at no cost to the taxpayer. In this particular project, we have four miles of internal 10 foot uh, trails and six foot paths all through here. The project and come around, and we have corridors. In this side that lead to the central right here. Um, four miles. That does not include any of your sidewalks within, within the development or on the exterior. So this is probably going to be one of the most walkable and bikeable uh, projects. And I've worked with your staff for well over a year. Um, design with this continuous collector. Um, obviously minimizing our floating feather beacon light our approach here Palmer and then we're, we came up with the active adult area here which will be 55 and older that's why we're going with private streets we'll have a gated here, gated here that will be turned around meet all your ACHD policies all those streets will be built to ACHD standard widths and design standards 
uh, but they will be private and owned by the HOA. Um, so this project has evolved over multiple years. Um, we've worked closely with the city. Um, they, they love it. The staff loves it. Um, we've incorporated everything that the agencies have asked us to do within this project to help the community. Um, not, I, I like these bigger projects because not only do these it provide opportunities for parks, for school sites, the trail systems, but it benefits not just a subdivision by itself, but the community as a whole. So uh, I, I can guarantee you that this is going to be the most walkable development out in the Eagle area. And um, the staff's been working on their staff report. Um, they will not schedule us for a public hearing unless we have an Ada County Highway District action. And we are scheduled for that public hearing on June 17th before the Planning Zoning Commission. And um, I ask that you not put us in a quandary with inaction when if, if there is inaction or deferral on this project today, they will defer me on the June 17th. They will not reschedule me for a hearing until an action has been taken by this body or by your staff. It has to be a final action because they do rely on you to tell them, does capacity exist? Is this project providing adequate collectors, for, uh, right of ways for roundabouts? Um, are all the roads, uh, local streets, under 1,000 vehicle trips per day? As Mindy indicated, we meet all policy standards. I have not asked for a waiver of anything from the district, and this meets all of the policy standards. And so, like I said, it is different than what you typically see where you're looking at an annexation and a preliminary plat and a planned unit development. The land use decision's been made. Now it's a matter of does it comply with the policies? Eagle will be reviewing it from the same perspective. Does it comply with their subdivision um, ordinance and their um, zoning ordinance? But as far as from the comprehensive plan perspective and from a land use perspective, those decisions were made years ago. Do you have any questions? No, thank you. Thank you. No questions? Thank you. Thank you. No? Okay. We do have one person who has signed up to address this item, Tom Bringle. If you would come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, I'm uh, Tom Bringle at 2475 North Sun Valley Place in Eagle. I um, just had a couple of questions, I think, really. Um, to be completely candid, I am involved with the Friends of Beacon Light Road, but I'm not primarily here to speak about that today. Uh, number one, uh, one of the things that I noticed uh, that is not discussed in the plan is the phasing of this, and it's obviously not going to go in all at once. So I'm kind of interested in understanding how the ACHD aspects that need to support this development are going to be lined up in implementation uh, with the development plan uh, as this goes forward. Um, I also had a question about the number of trips that were estimated there. I heard 8,000 plus, um, and I didn't hear that there was any particular contribution due to the elementary school, and I would expect that, especially during prime time hours, the in and outs at the elementary school would probably be significant. Third, uh, I appreciate the fact that the, the SIP, uh, as it's currently constructed, doesn't have any plans to expand Beacon Light Road beyond three lanes, uh, even through 2030 to 2035. But conspicuously in my mind is that, even though right now it doesn't say that's what it's for, there is right away on Beacon Light on the south side of 48 feet being retained, which is consistent with the ACHD policy for eventual expansion to five lanes. So until, and I guess until we see that the other kinds of amenities that Becky mentioned, like horse trails and things like that are actually implemented, that's still gonna be a concern for us a while, uh, for a while. Um, let's see. And lastly, I guess, uh, with respect to the uh, traffic issues, uh, I've certainly noticed in tracking developments over the city for the past few years that frequently after the development is implemented, uh, we have, uh, residents there coming and complaining about the traffic speed and things like that and after the fact uh, this the ACHD has to go back in and look at things like traffic calming issues and so on in the development and that ends up then being a 
burden to the taxpayers after the developers already left the scene. So I'm wondering if there isn't something that can be set up in this particular case to potentially anticipate those kinds of situations occurring. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for him? No? Okay. No one else has signed up, but if there is anyone else who would like to speak, we'd love to hear from you. Yes, come on up. And please state your name and address for the record. Thank you, President Arnold, Commissioners. My name is Sonia Delayden with Kittleson and Associates. The address is 101 South Capitol Boulevard, Suite 600 in Boise. Uh, I just, uh, Kittleson and Associates prepared the transportation impact study for this development, so I just wanted to provide some clarification on some technical items that have been brought up. Okay. Um, the first is Beacon Light Road. So Beacon Light Road was studied as a roadway facility as part of the traffic study. Your ACHD's three lane uh, thresh volume threshold for three lane facilities is 690 vehicles. We looked at Beacon Light Road 10 lanes in the future with a 4% per year growth rate, so quite a aggressive growth rate, plus traffic from this development. And even with that, the peak hour directional volumes on Beacon Light Road vary between 600 and 620. So still well within the 690 three lane directional volume threshold. So just to provide some clarity <laughs> on the um, whether or not this development is triggering or needing widening of beacon light, and that is definitely not the case. Um, I did want to address the comment about the elementary school not being included in the traffic study. That is correct. Toll Brothers is not proposing to develop the elementary school. They're merely donating site a site for the future school district development. And if and when that school is built, it will produce its own traffic impact study and evaluate its own transportation needs. And finally, the traffic calming issue, that is a condition of approval. ACHD staff did put that in the staff report, and Toll Brothers is working with, AC, is it, with ACHD staff to implement um, some traffic calming measures, some intersection control devices to manage speeds effectively within the development. So uh, with that, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take them. All right. Could you be a little, um, yes, thank you. Could you be specific on the traffic calming measures since um, Mr. Bringle had that as a specific question, the types of things that you're considering? Yes, yeah, so um, you know, ACHD does not prefer traffic calming measures that go actually within the street, such as speed bumps or things like that it becomes a maintenance issue. So things that we're looking at is implementing yield signs or stop signs at intersections along some of the longer roadways so that traffic has to stop every so often and that maintains speeds. And also roadway design, looking at roadway design to um, make sure the lanes and the roadway treatments alongside the road um, develop an environment where drivers do not want to speed or it's not conducive to them speeding. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Further questions? Thank you. No? Good question. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this item? Yes, please come up and state your name and address for the record. Deanna Smith, 910 Main Street. Boise, Idaho, 83702. I just have three questions for either the applicant or the staff to get a little clarification. Mindy referenced it being very walkable. It looks fairly walkable to me, but I'm curious what it's walkable to. That's one of the questions. And it, if I understood correctly, it sounds like they're trying to minimize the traffic flow out onto Beacon Light and Flooding Feather and drawing most of it into the collector. So I'd like clarification on that, and if that's the case, I'd like to know what treatments on the collector they're doing to make it um, safe and comfortable for especially youth walking up to the school to cross. Um, if that's where the bulk of the traffic is supposed to go, it needs to be very much thought about from a pedestrian perspective. And then my third question really is probably to you and your staff, why not um, connect this even a little better and, and disperse the traffic and have some of it go out on to Beacon Light and floating feather. So those are my three questions. Thank you. All right, questions for her? No? Okay, is there anyone else who would like to address this item? No, then we will uh, bring the developer back up to provide any rebuttal and perhaps answer the questions that Ms. Smith had. Becky McKay, Engineering Solutions. Um, so in, in the collector design, we have this continuous collector 
We also have Palmer that's a collector. So um, we didn't want to build any more collector than we absolutely have to because obviously the public has to maintain it in perpetuity. So we have this continuous collector here and that was based on the school and buses could come out to Beacon Light, drop down and come out to Palmer and then exit and go out to either continue down Palmer or go east on Floating Feather. Then I have a non-continuous collector here along Floating Feather. As far as traffic calming along the collectors, we have islands on the collectors. Um, we have some intersections uh, that, uh, that will be stop controlled. And then with the school being located here, we have pathways that come down and lead over to the school. Obviously, when the school uh, goes through for its entitlement process, There'll be discussions on where to put a hawk along that collector roadway if it is necessary. I have created open corridors that lead right up to the school and minimize the crossing of that collector. We have pathways that will run clear along the southern boundary, or the, sorry, the eastern boundary down to the south. And then we have linkages that go east and west here and here and then over to the um, school site. The question was asked, where did the lead? Well, the nature trail takes you along the Dry Creek Canal, which is heavily treed. There's a lot of vegetation. The Syringa neighbors asked if we leave the trees intact because it, uh, it is a very nice riparian area and we're going with a, na a nature trail, kind of a crushed gravel, so that uh, joggers, it's easier on their knees, their hips. People who want to walk their dogs may not necessarily want to walk them on concrete or at um, the pathways run both north and south within the uh, active adult area. Um, and then, like I said, we'll have foot uh, sidewalk on the east side, five foot detached on the west side. We have 30 foot of landscaping all along this collector on both sides as a buffer, 60 feet along our arterial. And the question was uh, about the widening of Beacon Light. We will be required to widen along our frontage of Beacon Light Road, uh, 17 feet from center line. Um, Beacon Light right now um, is more kind of a rural section. You got to kind of pull over to get around the bikes, bicyclists. So hopefully, you know, as these properties develops along the corridor and we widen that 17 feet, that will make it safer for the bicyclists. Also, I'd like to mention that this particular project, I did calculate the impact fees that it's going to generate, and it's going to generate $2.8 million in impact fees for Ada County Highway District alone. Um, this is a big project. Uh, we plan, you know, it it'll be could be 10, could be 15 year project. You never know. It's market driven. <coughs> um, not all these homes are going to come online instantly, and Nine different off-site intersections were studied in Kittleson's traffic study. Um, and the mitigation uh, that was necessary is listed as conditions in our staff report. We have reviews on these larger projects as we hit certain thresholds. I think it's at 500, 505 lots or something around there, uh, where then we are required to have our traffic engineers do intersection analysis to see if intersections are failing or they need upgrade. And then we, if there's right away available, participate in uh, our proportionate share of getting those upgrades made. But all the mitigation measures, Mindy's done a very thorough job. And like I said, I've, I've worked hand in hand with her on this project because of its size and complexity to make it what it is. So it, it's been a group effort and I appreciate the time that your staff spent with us. And I ask that you approve this this afternoon so we can move forward. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Uh, Madam President, yes, Ms. Uh, McKay, you had mentioned that you'd had several outreach uh, meetings with the neighborhood, the surrounding neighborhoods. Um, yes, how, about approximately how many have you had and were they well attended? Um, we had we had two neighborhood meetings. Um, I and we had probably the, the first one we had about 10 or 12 people. The second one we had probably 20 because there are new residents uh, that moved into the Syringa subdivision just next to us. 
um, and so they all came to the neighborhood meeting even those beyond the 300 feet okay. uh, to review the project to evaluate it um, I also promised them they gave me their emails and so everyone that was in attendance when I submitted to the city of Eagle I mailed them out a copy of the plan uh, so they would know what we had submitted and the traffic study was done <coughs> December and submitted to the district the round right after the first of January so it's been here at the district being evaluated for five months now okay. so the same type of protocol with the Beacon Light Road in vicinity and then um, could you speak a little bit to the timeline of the phasing I think that was another question that mr. Bringle had um, as far as the phasing is concerned, I think um, we showed, we may have had like seven phases, but obviously that's market driven. They can combine phases or they can reduce the size of phases, and we always ask for phasing flexibility. It's my understanding that the utilities are being brought, sewer and water are being brought up from the south in uh, Palmer be phasing it right here on this southern boundary uh, then they'll also want to bring on uh, the active adult a phase of that so there's there's three different products uh, in the traditional neighborhood and then they have kind of a single product here so we have four different products so they want to make sure that they have a little bit of each product mm -hmm. so um, they'll be moving from south to north thank you very much thank you I just, I just <laughs> wanted to thank you for including a lot of pedestrian amenities, a lot of uh, connectivity within the development. I realize it's not once you're outside the development, there might not be places to walk to or cycle to, but at least within that. Um, the city re asked you for those, is that correct? The city required when you were talking with them in your development agreement um, about uh, pedestrian Madam, amenities. Madam Chairman, um, Commissioner Hansen. Uh, the city requested the 10-foot walk along Beacon Light and along the east side of Palmer and along Floating Feather. As far as the pathways that we have internally, that was at our discretion. Okay. We did that. Um, the Parks Commission, we showed this, I think, as a foot nature trail. They asked me to increase the width to 10, so say mountain bikes could pass somebody that's walking, um, and we did do that. Yep. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, further questions? No? Uh, is there anything further from staff or any questions for staff? No. No? Okay. No. Just thank you, Mindy. Commission? Madam, Madam President, Chair. I move approval of uh, the Belvoir Estate Subdivision Preliminary Plats and Rezone um, based on the uh, conditions in the staff report. All right, is there a second? I'll second the motion. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a substitute motion oh, to approve the staff report as written with a strong reaffirmation by this commission on the current constraints that are contained in the Master Street map on Beacon Light Road and Floating Feather Road. All right, the substitute motion dies for lack of second. We'll go back to the original motion. Is there any discussion on the original motion? Madam President, I have yes, a question. Is there any reason uh, that we could not include that language, Mr. Price? Well, it's not so really you, in front of us. Motion. I mean, it's. I need a second in order to talk. Not in front of us. So. Uh, Madam President, uh, Commissioner Steve Price, ACHD General Counsel, Commissioner May, the email certainly can include that as uh, Commission intent. Thank you. Okay. Call for the question. Um, All right. I would say. Oh, then I would second that one because so you did include floating feather in yes. the area. <sighs> Mr. Price, procedurally, now what do I do? I, I'm not quite sure where you were. Did uh, I think Commissioner May was seeking clarification before she right. was going to make uh, a second? All right, then is there discussion on the substitute motion? Um, thank you. I uh, recognize we are very constrained as to what we can or cannot impose. This city has much more flexibility and apparently it's also been able to request conditions regarding uh, mobility, pedestrian and bicycle and other mobility. And I'm glad that they have done, they have done that uh, based on the very constrained uh, tools that we have. 
Uh, and I think it's very important that we reaffirm, reaffirm because traffic is going to be flowing onto Beacon Line, Floating Feather, that we are re at least this commission, uh, future commissions may change their mind, this commission reaffirms that the current constraints uh, are consistent with our policy beliefs. I'm sure the city would go along with that too. Further discussion? Madam President, it really doesn't matter one way or the other because it really doesn't do anything. We already have affirmed it and we can't bind future commissions, so it's um, a distinction without a difference. So it's really just politics. It's just politics. It's just politics. It's just politics. And I would point out that the staff report, uh, the traffic study indicates that only 3% of the traffic is likely to go out onto Beacon Road. So I don't think it's necessary to add the additional language. I think it's just politics, but any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay? Nay. That was nay. for the substitute motion. Yeah. So motion passes three to two. All right, uh, that takes us to public communications. Is there anyone here who would like to address the commission in public communications? Seeing no volunteers, we are adjourned. <clears throat> Bingo.